I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society and I'm joined today with Dr. Cassandra Schufelt. Dr. Schufelt is the Associate Director of the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Centre, Co-Director of the Preventative and Rehabilitative Cardiac Centre and Director of the Women's Hormone and Menopause Program at the Cedar sinai Heart Institute. She's an Associate Professor at Cedar sinai Medical Centre and the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. She's also a member of the Board of Trustees of the North American Menopause Society. So for our women who are out there wanting to know about heart disease, how is heart disease in women different than our male counterparts? So traditionally, we think of heart disease, and us doctors have learned that heart disease are the big blocked arteries. But it's been shown that in about half of women that have heart attacks, those arteries are open. And what do I mean by that? There's no big plaque or blockages. Um, it's all, it's due to something else. And we've learned a lot over the last decade, even two decades, in dedicated research for women's heart disease, that there's a downstream effect. And women tend to build up plaque a little bit more evenly throughout the big arteries. So if, so they look open, but then that, that impacts the microcirculation of the small arteries that are coming off those big arteries itself. And that actually is what we call microvascular disease. So when we're looking at risk factors for developing these diseases, we think of the typical risk factors that we see in men, um, smoking, obesity, high cholesterol, diabetes, family history. Is there anything that's unique as a risk factor for a woman? So the traditional risk factors, which is what you just mentioned, an early family history of early heart disease, are good for both men and women, very evenly found to predict heart disease. But what we've also learned is that there are specific risk factors for women that, uh, such, as, such as things that happen during pregnancy. We used oh. to think that what happened during pregnancy stayed during pregnancy. But now we know that if you developed high blood pressure, um, diabetes, or even a more severe form called preeclampsia, which causes you to deliver the baby early, uh, which is a very, it's an overwhelming effect um, from high blood pressure where you get swelling and it can be life threatening. Mm -hmm. We do, and it reverses after the placenta is delivered and the baby's delivered. And we now know that up to five, as soon as five years after, women can actually develop heart disease that had that. So we need to think of pregnancy as a natural stress test. So adverse outcomes during pregnancy, during pregnancy are sort of a predictor of what might come down the road. Yes. So if you, and if you had an adverse pregnancy or an adverse predictor of pregnancy, um, it's important to not just see your OBGYN, but also maybe see your internist in a more frequent basis just to continue to monitor your blood pressure to get your cholesterol checked. Um, and we, do, we tend to do that, the, the cholesterol specifically after you've breastfed, because there are shifts and changes to the cholesterol panel that come with being pregnant and come from um, at postpartum. So it would seem that treatment may be somewhat different for women than men. Is that the case? Well, I think what we need to really identify are those specific risk factors. And if a woman has those, because there's also other ones, autoimmune disorders is a new risk factor for a woman. We know depression can be a risk factor in itself for heart disease, and it's more profound in a woman. We know women who've had treatment for breast cancer, let's say they had radiation to their chest area, or they had specific or certain chemotherapies that we know can be more harmful to the small blood vessels of the heart. Um, it's important to really identify those risk factors and then move forward and, uh, to see if they're, they're, they need to be on treatment. And before I let you go, one important thing for women to understand is that their symptoms may not be the classic squeezing chest pain that we typically associate with a male event. Right. So chest pain is the most common symptom for heart disease, but women can have milder chest pain. They might think it's not related to their heart. They could have back pain. They could have nausea or vomiting um, or anything pretty much what I say above the waist. Mm -hmm. If that's new to you, and it's accompanied, or it's becoming more frequent, or it's accompanied with overwhelming fatigue, or you just don't feel right. That's the other thing, is I think women have more of a sixth sense about this. Mm -hmm. um, go get checked out and go see your provider. And when we're talking about getting checked out, aside from a traditional cardiogram, are stress tests in women as predictive as they are in men? So the treadmill stress test, 
the name is actually called the Bruce Treadmill right. Test. Um, and women carry ourselves different. We carry our weight distribution differently. And so in the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center, we do bicycle stress tests. And we do it accompanied by an echo, uh, an ultrasound of the heart that actually allows us to see not only what the heart's doing at rest, but after you've exercised. And it seems to be that's a better fit for a woman. Well, it's clear that we're saying that in terms of gender-specific medicine, the heart in women is different than the heart in men. Absolutely. And that, I think, is a very important message for all women out there to hear. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being Thank with you. us. Thank you for having me.